Gabriel, uh, I'm gonna try and be brief because I have to go. It's September, which means life goes on. Uh, we all have things to do and I don't have time to watch movies or review them, even if I do watch them, so... Gabriel, the only reason I even wanted to watch this be was because of Rory Culkin, who is awesome. I really like him. Uh, I remember watching him in Mean Creek in 2004 and, you know, he's popped in other things like Lime Life and Hick and I think I last time I saw him was maybe in Electric Children and that became a favorite of mine very quickly. I really liked that movie and he was great in it and so I wanted to watch this because of him because I figured it wasn't going to be very story driven it was going to be more character driven and it's a very short movie, it's an hour and 20, but it gets slow, and when I say slow, I mean like, okay, I get it, like, I understand that this is supposed to be him being psychologically troubled, I, I have no idea how to phrase this, we don't really know what's happened to him, but he is in a what we assume is a mental facility and he comes home for the weekend and you know he lives with his mom and his brother his older brother and uh, they're trying to keep him safe and take care of him and keep him at home so that he doesn't go out and cause trouble but we, uh, what they don't know is that he actually came home to find his first love this girl that he hasn't seen or talked to in years and he's trying to track her down, you know, she she's in New York somewhere and he knows what college she goes to, but he he doesn't know where she went home for the for the holidays and so he tries to find her. And it's very clear that he, I don't want to spoil it, but it's very clear that things aren't going to go well. You know, he has this fantasy that she still loves him even though last time they saw each other they were little kids. You know, he hasn't seen her like five years and um, he has this fantasy that she loves him and she's going to be with him and she's going to take him in and she's going to take care of him. So I was interested to see what exactly happened to him, how did he have this mental breakdown, we find out that it has to do with his father that committed suicide, but, and that's not a spoiler, that's part of the whole setup, but, you know, we don't really know the hell is happening to him he is just troubled all that like it's impossible to have a normal conversation with him because he brings up like the most random shit and it's clear that he didn't get over his childhood i guess it was a big trauma for him his father um committing suicide so he he lives in this fantasy world that you know, he goes to the same diner that he went to as a kid, he says the same things that he said as a kid, he wants to see his grandma, and it's like he never grew up. And he thinks that this girl, who he loved as a child, will be there for him. But I mean, the ending is pretty damn predictable. Like I said, this isn't a story-driven movie, because it's very slow plot wise and you know what's happening it's more about him and him struggling to to be normal but i feel like there wasn't enough there you know rory Culkin. i feel like it has been better before there were a couple scenes where it was quite iffy for me i don't know i feel like we didn't get enough out of this character i understand that he's troubled it's only a weekend that he's spending at home but I never saw him, you know, he keeps saying that he wants to be normal and he wants to live his life. He doesn't take his pills, he says he's not going to do what other people want him to do. He says that um, he's not happy at the mental facility and wants to stay home. But at the same time he runs away trying to find this girl and then his mom is like, listen, you're going back because I cannot fix you. I, I'm not a professional and I cannot take care of you. And he's trying to like plead with her, like, no, let me stay home. And it's all very predictable and, it, you know, it was an interesting thing to see how he carries on conversations with other people. Because you feel like, 
okay, he's doing well, and then two sentences later, he just says something like, maybe I deserve to die. Uh, you know, that was a big thing with him. He kept saying, maybe I deserve to die. But I feel like there wasn't much there. And another bizarre thing was the music, which was very tense in a lot of scenes. It was like building up to something. It was building up, it was really quick, really fast-paced music, and it was just intense. And it's like a scene where he is in New York, like on the street, just walking around. So I feel like they want, you know, the, the, the director wanted us to feel maybe anxiety, which is what he's feeling, being outside and, you know, among other people and him not feeling normal. But it wasn't that at all. It just made me feel a bit stressed for no reason because nothing happened, it didn't lead to anything, he didn't feel, like, he didn't look like he was feeling stressed. So I feel like that music was completely unnecessary and it happened two or three times throughout the movie. And I mean, yeah, it's very predictable because, like I said, it's not that story-driven, it's more character-driven, but at the same time, I feel like the character isn't enough. And then his family was just there we never really got to spend a lot of time with his mom or his brother like they're there they're in the scene but it's like nothing's happening with them i feel like the mom had a really difficult time with the father being also having mental issues and being in a mental facility and the older brother wanted to sort of help his younger brother and keep him in check but he wasn't really around i understand again it's only one weekend but i feel like if they're gonna bring him home and try and take care of him and keep him safe, I feel like they should be spending more time with him. Instead, he's just like, I'm gonna go out. And they're like, okay, take your meds, which he doesn't. So, I guess the family dynamic wasn't my style. I wasn't a fan of his family, I guess, and his family life. And I wish we had seen more of him, I guess, just finding out what exactly happened to him and how he got to this point. Was he always like this as a child? He he seemed to have a normal life until his father maybe committed suicide, but I have no idea if this is like a genetic disorder that um they both have. He got it from his father. I, I have no idea how mental issues work, if they work like that genetically. Um, he seemed very troubled, uh, very troubled, and he seemed like he should have been in a mental facility. And that's that. I mean, that's the whole movie. And I said I was going to be brief, and I've been here for like eight minutes, just saying nothing. So, uh, yeah, Gabriel, I, I was a bit disappointed. I wanted to like him more than I did. It wasn't a complete waste of time or anything like that. I, like I said, it did get slow. But I was expecting a bit more of it. So... Yeah, I was a bit disappointed, but I mean, if you don't have as high expectations as I did, maybe you won't be disappointed, but uh, because I do like Rory Culkin, and I feel like, I feel like he could have done better, you know, I, I saw like all these reviews and stuff saying that he was fantastic and amazing and exceptional and a breakthrough performance, and I'm sitting here like, uh, I mean, it was sort of okay like he wasn't terrible but i feel like he could have been way better maybe with a better script because a lot of the lines that he said were just bizarre like no one says that so and i don't know if that's supposed to be him being crazy or it's just not a very good script so yeah gabriel um yeah tim what do you think bye you know what i love Especially after a long night on the bus, I just need a cigarette. Would you care for a smoke? Do you know Alice? This is Woodmer North, right? Nobody named Alice lives here. We haven't seen each other for a really long time. It's just really important that I find her. Hi. I'm looking for Alice. She's not here. How come I've never heard of you? I've just been away for a while. Mm. Fats, would you calm down with the phone calls? So where were you? 
kids, you all right? Fine, he overslept. Are you trying to kill me? As soon as possible. You're doing a hell of a job. Thank you. Your favorite. Do you melt cheese on it? Please pass the cheese from Belize. Please, please. Please pass the cheese from Belize. Here, man, let me cut it. What, what, what do you think I'm gonna do? You think I'm gonna hurt you? Cut it out. Oh, you think I'm gonna hurt me? You remember Alice? Alice, New York, New York. It's uh, East 95th Street. Can I help you? Uh, I'm going to 9th Street. Yeah, I can't let you up. There's a girl. What girl? Just a girl. She loves me. I'm gonna ask her to marry me. You can't pull this kind of shit anymore, Gabriel. Don't call me that. Listen, Gabe, I really want to help you, but you have got to talk to me. They want to send you back. Hey! Gabriel. No, don't call me that. Do you know who I am? You got all the juicy details about the psychotic younger brother. Gabe!